I welcome all of you, especially those who are here with us for the first time. I heartily welcome you all. Today we want to look at three teachings or three doctrines in Christ in the churches now. People are teaching them in the name of Jesus. But these three teachings, if you are hearing to any of them, or if you are following any of them, know that your faith is destroyed. You have destroyed your faith. And you quickly have to repent. You have to repent. Or your faith is destroyed. Your faith cannot work. These three teachings or doctrines destroy Christ, the power of Christ in you. The power of Christ which you have received through faith in him. These three doctrines make them, make them useless because these doctrines are not of faith and not only are they not of faith, they are set to destroy the faith in Christ Jesus. So when you are following any of these doctrines, you may mention the name of Jesus. You'll be praying. You think you have salvation in Jesus. You think grace, the grace of Jesus is working in your life. But what you don't know is that your faith has been destroyed by these three doctrines. We want to look at them. What we need to understand when we believe in Christ is that the Spirit of God, who God has given to those who believe in Christ, is capable enough of causing believers to function in the will of God and bring them to the purpose of God and cause them to inherit the blessings and the promises of God. The Spirit of God is capable of doing that. But He can only do that if believers are hearing the truth, which is the faith. When we talk about the truth, we talk about the faith in Christ Jesus, it is the truth. Every faith you have heard before Jesus came was a shadow. Every faith, they were acting as a shadow. And every word that was spoken in those days by the prophets were all pointing to Christ. So when Christ came, all of them ended because Christ, who was the subject of their doctrines, himself appeared. So when you are listening to the faith in Christ Jesus, you are listening to the truth and that is all what you need. Everything that the scriptures have said, they have said from Genesis to the day John the Baptist finishes ministry, they were all pointing to Christ. The subject of all those doctrines were, was Christ. And when Christ came, everything ended. So when you believe in Jesus Christ, you have now come to the reality of God. So whatever was taught then, it's now appeared and he is the Christ. So Jesus said the scriptures concern him. And the word of God is saying that the righteousness of the law end when you believe in Christ Jesus. So that's what we need to understand. Now, Apostle Paul was a Pharisee and he was very stand believer of the scriptures, the law of Moses and the prophets, new sacrifices and ordinances. When he came to the church, through that great grace, he himself called great grace, because people who are gone so far in the things of the law and the prophets and made them to be their means of worshiping God, they are very difficult to draw them back. Anyway, he took Jesus himself to, to cause Paul to repent, who was formerly called Saul. 
when he came to the church, he told the Galatians, Oh, fully Galatians, for I bewitch you that I shall not obey this truth. I want to learn this from you. Do you receive the Spirit through the works of the law that's doing the scriptures? Or healing faith? Are you so foolish? He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and worked miracles. Is it by the works of the law, by healing faith? But know that nobody can be justified by the law in the sight of God. So it's evident the judge should live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. That was what he was telling the church. Before faith came, they were kept under the law. Shut up to that faith, which was later be revealed. But when faith came, they, were, they are no longer under the law, which is called the schoolmaster. Writing to three, verse 1 to 3, verse 5, verse 11 and 12, verse 23 to 25. Writing to three. 1 to 3, verse 5, then verse 11, 12, verse 23 to 25. So we need to understand this thing so that we will not become wayward when we are craving to believe in Jesus. And then we see even in our own life that we have been destroyed. We can't inherit any promise of God. And the blessings we are receiving is just the ordinary blessings which the people in the world who don't even believe in Christ are receiving. So what do we have? more than them now faith in Christ Jesus is preached by the gospel but like the Israelites many Christians today do not obey the gospel which is the true word of God they rather obey and want to do the law of Moses just find themselves by that law of Moses and the prophets and think when they are doing those things then they are rather pleasing God but the word of God has caused us to understand that the law is not of faith. And anybody cannot be justified in the presence of God by the law of Moses. That should be very clear to everybody. Apostle Paul said to the church, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have the seed of God, but not according to knowledge. For they are going about to establish their own righteousness. So they have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Then he said, he made one pronunciation. He said, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Romans chapter 10, 1 to 4. Christ is the end. When you come to Jesus Christ, everything you are seeking through the law of Moses and the prophets that come to an end. Because they all concern Christ. In John chapter 5, when you begin from verse 36, it said it doesn't receive testimony from people. Because John the Baptist was describing, talking about him today. He said, that is not what he received. What the Father has given to him to do is what testified of him. Then he told the people, you have never heard the voice of my Father at need than nor seen his sheep. Set the scriptures. You think you have life in them. They concern me and you not come to me to have life. If you have believed Moses, you should have believed me, believed me, for he wrote concerning me. John chapter 5, from verse 36 to 40 and verse 46. This is what Jesus said to the Israelites. The Father has sent me. He testified of me. And the works I'm doing is the testimony. You have neither heard a voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Search the scriptures. You think you have life in them. They concern me and you will not come to me and have life. If you have believed Moses, you should have believed in me. For Moses wrote concerning me. That was what Jesus was speaking. John chapter 5 from 36 to 40 and verse 46. Now, we are going to look at three teachings that are going on in the church in our days and these doctrines are very dangerous the first one is the teaching that Jesus Christ is the father the, the people are preaching boldly today that Jesus Christ is the father when you say the father 
It is it's different from saying Abraham is the father, Jesus is the father. It's different. He's talking, he's saying that Jesus is the God called the Father. But this is what Jesus himself taught. They, he and the apostles came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, and he asked them, Matthew chapter 16, from verse 13 to 19. Matthew 16, 13 to 19. Jesus asked them, who do you think that I am? They told him, you are one of these prophets. They mentioned a lot of prophets there. And then he asked them, what do you say that I am? And then Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he told him, Peter, Peter, my father has revealed this to you, not to your flesh. Not blood, blood, blood and flesh. And you are Peter. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The rock here is Christ. Christ, the son of God, I will build my church. So the church will know me as Christ, the son of God. And, I'll, and the gate of hell, first of all, I said the gate of hell will not prevail against that rock, the church I'm going to build on this liberation. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you burn here on earth, we burn in heaven. What you lose, you lose to heaven. What Peter said is that you are the son of the living God. That was the identity. And he said it is his father who showed it to him. Now, Jesus said, John chapter 17, 1 to 3, in a prayer, Father, glorify your son as I glorify you on earth. And this is eternal life, verse 3, John 17, that they will know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, Jesus made a statement. He said in Matthew, he made a statement in Luke chapter 10. I want us to look at that statement who Jesus made. Luke chapter 10, verse 22. Jesus says something there. He said, Luke chapter 10, verse 22. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man know the Son. Who, no man know who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Nobody can know Jesus Christ except the Father reveal him to you. And nobody can know the Father except Jesus Christ reveal him to you. Now, when Peter said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus said, it is my Father who revealed it to you. So who is revealing Christ to the people who are saying that he is the Father? If the Father is revealing Christ, and Jesus said, it is only the Father who can reveal it to anybody. And Jesus is saying that it, is, it was his father who revealed him to Peter. And Peter said he's the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter didn't say he's the Christ, the father. He didn't say that. And Jesus said that the, what the father had revealed to him. So who is revealing to people today that Jesus is the father? So we should call him Jesus Christ, the father. Not Jesus Christ, the son. This is of course from Satan. Anything that is not from God is not godly. It is ungodly. It comes from Satan. And what is the primary reason why you should believe that Jesus is the Son of God? The reason why you should believe that Jesus is the Son of God is because when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you also receive the same thing. When you confess that Jesus is the Son of God, you will believe that. When you believe that, you also become the son of God, just like him. You become an equal here, a joint here with him. Because as he is, so are you. So if you can see that Jesus is the son of God, you also become the same. Jesus did not come to create us to be the father. He came to create us to be himself, to receive his fullness. Jesus is God, but he is not the father. The new creature who's the new man, or the true man, is God. He has godly nature. What you have to understand today is that when you believe in Jesus Christ, you have become God, but you are not the Father. 
you are not Jesus Christ. That is the, what the new man is. Because right from Genesis chapter 1, Genesis to 28, the scripture said, God said, let's create man in our image after our likeness. So the man is created in the image and the likeness of God. So the man, that true man, is God. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24, is saying that, don't confess, Ephesians chapter 4, don't confess in that old nature, that old man. Be renewed in your mind and put on the new man, which after God is created in Righteousness and true God. That new man is created after God. He's just like God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. The apostle Paul, let this man be in you, who also in Christ Jesus, who did not think it's robbery to, call, to make himself God. God, that's what, he, that's what he is. That is who he is. Jesus Christ is God. Right from the beginning, John chapter 1 from verse 1, he was God and he was God from the beginning. He was the true man in heaven. All things were created by God through that true man. That is why Jesus said that if you have faith in him, nothing should be impossible to you. Whatever you say, you obtain it. So this is the faith you should live as a new man. Everything about you is God. Second Corinthians 5, verse 17 and 18 says, If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. The old is past. All things are become new. And all things are of God. So that is the faith. So the new man is the son of God. And you can't say that the son of God is a man or is an animal. When you give birth, you give birth to after your kind. So the people born of God, who are born again, born by the gospel, they have become sons of God. These are gods. They are gods. So when Jesus was arguing with the Pharisees because they said, why are you saying you and your father are one? He said, but it's written in your law that you are God. So even you who receive the word of God have become God. What about me who is sanctified? John chapter 10 from verse 30 downwards. Now he said, somebody who has been sanctified and sent by the father is the son of God. So when he said he and the father are one, he qualified to say that. And he said in John chapter 17, verse 18, As you have sent me, so have I sent them. So we have been sanctified by Christ and sent. So we become sons of God. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, He who sanctified us and we who are sanctified are the same. So it's not a shame to call us brethren. So when you believe in Jesus, you have become like him. He said the son of God and he is God. That is exactly who you are. So if you are living in that faith, Satan has no power against you. Whatever you say should come to pass because you have become God. So you have to have the mind as God. And the scripture says that every word that comes out from the mouth of God will not return empty. It will perform. That is Isaiah chapter 55. I'll be from the, from verse 10 hours. So, the, the same way, you have to believe. And when you speak anything, when you say any word, that word, because you have also become God, that word will perform. So, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19 and 20 says that, Know this love of Christ, which passed now, that you be filled with all the fullness of God. You become all full of God. And God is capable enough to do everything and anything you say according to his power working in you because now you have the power of God working inside you and like as Isaiah said Isaiah chapter 10 Isaiah, sorry Isaiah 55 verse 10 as rain come down and storm from heaven so the way that come out from my mouth so the way that come out of my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing which I send it into you have to have this same mentality that the words you are speaking they are not empty. They have to come to you performing the word. Uh, Elijah said something. He said, it's not going to rain according to my word. First Kings 17, 1. And this word which Elijah said is being quoted by James and said that word 
even though Elijah, you look at him, he was just a man like any one of us. Why he spoke and shot the heavens. In John and James chapter 5, if you read 17 and 18. He said, my word, which I have spoken. He didn't say the word of God. That's what you're supposed to understand. And the word of God, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 11 and 14, that we are greater than that Elijah. Why? Because when you receive Christ, you have become God. Elijah was not God, but you have become God because you have become the son of God. This was supposed to know. And you can have that nature when you believe that Christ is the Son of God. Now in John chapter 14, that's where it confused the people. John chapter 14, Jesus said, anyone who sees me has seen the Father. Because Philip asked him, show us the Father. Haven't you seen me, Philip? I've been with you for him that. But he said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. That's what he said. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I am here on behalf of the Father. So anything got to do with the Father, come and ask me. That was what he wanted to explain in John chapter 14 from verse 8. But when people read only one verse, they conclude everything. Today you can call yourself that anyone who has seen you has seen Christ. Not that you are the Christ, but because you are here on earth on behalf of Christ. It's just like, you go to an embassy in a country and want to ask the government who sent that embassy there. In that compound, that embassy there, that ambassador there, is the government of that uh, home country. He represents the government. When you do any rubbish thing there, it's against the government of his land or her land. So that is what it means to be that if you see me, you have seen the father. Because the father is in me and I am the father. It doesn't mean that he's saying that he's the father. Now, the second thing that we have to look at is the teachings that are going on and saying that unless one justifies oneself by the law of Moses and the prophet, by a sacrifice, by ten commandments, by a sacrifice, by ordinances, the one cannot please God. The word of God says, Corinthians 3, 11, it says, nobody can be justified by the law in the sight of God. That's what the word of God is saying. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. It says, By the law shall no flesh be justified before God. When you go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 4, it says that Christ will come of no effect to anyone of you, justify yourself by law, you fall from grace. This persuasion is not from the one who called it. a little living, living the whole lamp. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4, verse 8 and 9. So who is teaching that when you justify yourself by Ten Commandments, by tithes, by anointing oil, by Sabbath, by that shall not, then you go to heaven. Who is teaching that? This is Satan. Because the moment you justify yourself by those things, you think your righteousness come by those things, you have rejected Christ. Galatians 2.21 I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the Lord, then Christ died in vain. The reason why Jesus died is to bring us to the righteousness of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Christ is the end of the righteousness of the law. Christ is the end when you believe in Christ. Seeking righteousness by the law ends there. This is what we need to believe. So if anybody is bringing the scriptures to you, People are preaching that, well, when you pay tithes, God bless you. That is telling you that then Jesus did not even do anything for you. You can't receive any blessing from God through Christ. Then the death of Jesus is vain. Because Jesus died that you can receive the blessing of Abraham. Return 3, 13 and 14. So if you are replacing that thing with Christ, then you should forget about what you are craving in Christ, because then you can't have anything in Christ. The third thing that we should be very careful is the doctrines that are described as fable or inferior gospel. Apostle John said in Second Corinthians, sorry, Apostle Paul, not John, not John or Peter, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said in Second Corinthians chapter, these apostles sometimes I interchange their names. 
What have you mentioned one? I just mentioned that. Apostle Paul, he said in 2 Corinthians 11, from verse 3 and 4, that Satan can deceive the church as he deceived Eve. For somebody coming and preach another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel, you will believe. But he said, these are false apostles. Because Satan himself is turned himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 and 4, 13 to 15. And then he said, in greeting from verse 1, greeting chapter 1, from verse, this is what Apostle Paul said. It says, Some people in his days, people are coming to the church who were preaching inferior gospel. And this is what he said concerning these people. It's very scary, so we have to be very careful. It said, I, I do, it said from verse, let's begin from verse 6, greeting chapter 1. I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another, but there is some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or any angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As you have said before, so said I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that, than that you have received, let him be a curse. So people who are preaching that inferior gospel to you, they are all cursed. They have been cursed. And when Apostle Paul said you are cursed, you are cursed. They have, he had that power. He had that power in 1 Corinthians 5 even to cause somebody to die. Like what Apostle Peter also did in Acts 5. So Apostle Paul cursed those who are preaching that kind of gospel. And which are they? They are called fables, just stories. God will do it for you. God will deliver you. God will save your life. Listen, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you have received the whole power of Christ in you. And you have to use that power. You work with that power. He said you will cast out devils in his name, on his behalf. You will cast out devils. You will lay hands on the sick and they recover. So what you need to hear is the gospel and believe. Mark 16, 15 to 18. These signs will follow those who believe in my name. He label what they can do, what they, these people could do. In John chapter 14, verse 12, say, anyone who believes in me, what I do, he can also do, and do greater. So when you believe in Jesus Christ, and somebody is coming to you and said, oh, you just relax. God will come to do it. And then you are relaxing and waiting for God. That is inferior gospel. The person is denying the power. That person is from Satan. He's afraid that you can do things and, and, and remove them from their throne. So you teach you don't do anything. Wait for God. It's called inferior gospel. The gospel that teach so sweet things to you and makes you to relax and think things will work by itself. If you believe, you need to speak. That's through your prayer. You need to cast things away. You need to destroy things. You need to make sure that you take over things. You don't have to relax. When you desire something, he said, when you pray, you believe that you receive it and you receive it. So he said, have faith in God. But faith in God is not justification in the, in the, in the faith in God is not justification in the things of the scriptures. And it's not saying that Jesus is the Father. It's not believing in that kind of suit, suit, suiting uh, gospel that want you to relax. Go and sleep and things will work for you. These are inferior gospels, and they destroy the power of Christ working in the believers. So take note of these things, and don't let people deceive you. Stay blessed. Amen.